What's up, everybody? Steve Wallace here, uh, creator, producer, composer of How King, and I am super excited today. Sheree Moultrie is in the house. What's up, Sheree? Give it up, everybody, for Sheree. Uh, Sheree plays Cat in How King, and uh, we're going to be here for Hal Analysis so we can break this thing down, so we can analyze How King and understand all the aspects that go into it as far as what us, the creatives, did to, to, um, to put it all together for you all. All right, so what up, Sheree? Hey, how you doing, Steve? I'm nice good. to be here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, let's talk about how King. A everyone I speak to, they really enjoy your performance in it. Aww. Yeah, so I've been in a couple of interviews, and they give like out awards at the end of the interviews and stuff like that. <laughs> and so they love they love you and Tyreek, and they love so much, so many more in, in the cast. Um, how did you get involved with? with doing musical theater because you do a lot of musical theater now um, <laughs> and also talk a little about how we we got connected and how you got a part of how king as well so i got my start singing in the church obviously i think a lot of people did but i found my way to musical theater when i moved to high school um, I'm from myrtle beach south carolina and i got mistakenly put in this choir called the show choir at my school and they did a lot of musical theater work and show tunes and all of that stuff. And I didn't really, like I'd heard of Broadway and things a little bit. Yeah. Um, like I knew what Dreamgirls was and like some of the, the whiz and things like that, but didn't know anything about Hello Dolly or any of those Oklahoma, those types of things. Yeah. So I got my introduction to musical theater through that choir. Um, and I just kind of fell in love with the idea of combining acting and singing at the same time and just, the costuming, just all the whole full process of what musical theater is and the magic. I moved to New York not to do musical theater originally. Oh, okay. I moved to New York to do finance. So I worked in finance for a little while and then would go to shows and realize like I was missing it a lot. And like, why am I not trying to do that? And I lived in New York and kind of found my way and have been doing musical theater um, for the past couple of years, connecting to Hal King and to you, Steve, we went to the same church. Um, I just happened again to stumble upon this church when I moved to New York, joined the choir and Steve was the uh, director. Yeah, you kind of gave me a call one day randomly and said you're doing this cool project. And I was really starting starting to get my feet wet in acting and, and things like this. This was my first film. Um, and so I was like, you want me to be in it? I, absolutely. I thought I would be in it for a hot second, but um, he wanted me to play one of the lead roles. So I was like, yeah, absolutely. Right. So anyway, let's get into it. Um, the whole thing with the Howl analysis is that we break down like your favorite scene or a scene in the film. Um, and it's typically been a scene that the, the person is in, uh, although we had Myron on one time, you know, so that, 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 that didn't apply there, but actually side note, Myron is actually in the film. Okay. So did he have a cameo? I feel like he didn't have a cameo per se. I think they were filming and he then realized after they started shooting that he was in the back. <laughs> he was in the shot. Oh, really? yeah, he was in the shot. It's like really, I think they were shooting and then he he just realized and he just started like moving with the crowd like this. <laughs> um, it's, in the, it's in the film. Tell us a little bit about the scene that you chose that we, that we spoke about. Yeah, I feel like um, the club scene where everyone kind of meets each other and there's this you, this opportunity for you to meet who Scroop is and see the dynamic between Scroop and Kat. And this is the first instance that you see this interaction. And I think it mm -hmm. does a lot of kind of foreshadowing and just shows what the rest of the film will bring. Um, and so, yeah, it, it was one of the, the, I wouldn't say difficult, but very interesting scenes that we shot. It was one of the first days that we were shooting. Um, so I do really remember kind of walking into it like, oh, what is this gonna be like? <laughs> this is a very interesting type of scene. Um, yeah. And how are we gonna do this and how do we make it work? So 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 this is in this is in act one of How King. And um it, it, we're in the club, Madam Quickly's. Um and Kat, what what is what is Kat doing? Are you supposed to be there? You hang out here all the time, or what? What's going What's going on here? Yeah, I'm not supposed to be there. I, my father is giving a big speech at another venue, and I decide that I'm going to talk to the folks who are closest to me, as far as like the next generation, trying to kind of convince them this is the way to go. So I go to this open mic and share my thoughts and lift my voice, and mm -hmm. someone and interrupts. Dad, and uh -huh. your dad, and I, someone interrupts, that would be me. 
And your dad <laughs> is a uh, a local politician. Yes. Here in this in this small town of yes. Alaya. Where yes. Is. And I do not agree with his views at all. Mm -hmm. um, quite I'm quite the opposite of what he wants and kind of wants to push forward. Um, and so that's why I get interrupted and sort of pulled out of the venue. So right there, you will see uh, a Darian Dean, which this is a funny point too, is that you you never met Darian. No. On set. No. You met you met him after. When I, you did I, had him, I, hadn't, I only met him on Zoom at this point. I've never no, met no, him. No. No, we did that one thing at uh, M and N before. Remember, when it was you? Yeah, yeah. At the at the uh, TV station. We went to the TV station. It was you? It was Darian, and it was. Uh, Are you and sure? it was Tony. Yeah, I got pictures, man. I'm gonna put pictures on the screen right now. <laughs> <laughs> I got pictures. We were there together, oh. and I remember this conversation. Oh wait. I do remember that. Wow. Yeah. This was so long ago. It's like now it's coming back. Okay. I do yeah, remember yeah. that. I do remember and that. And I remember that conversation because you y'all were in the room together and right. you're like, okay, who is this guy? And, right. and I was like, wait, you're like in the same scene, sort of, but you've right. never met each other, which is right. really fascinating. The um, magic of film and the magic of film. <laughs> yeah. All the secrets. But anyway, here we go. This is um Darian Dean plays Hotspur, and he's coming to look for Hal. Hal's been kicking and hanging out, but he's not living up to his responsibility. And Darian Dean is plays Hotspur, his cousin. He's like, you need to come back home and get your life right. Right? That's outside. And inside, there's this guy named Scroop that shows up, and he's like, and we'll see what, we'll show that, and we'll see what happens. All right, here we go. But I have mm -hmm. to stop on this shot because this shot is so classic now. This shot right here, when he throws her on the table, it's just become such an iconic shot for Hal King. Um, mm -hmm. It's so dramatic, so awesome. That whole scene, <laughs> section here and this, oh, this is great. This is great. Uh, shout out to Tari Ture for this too. But let's talk about, I want to talk about your hair. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that was a whole situation. I think the, this was the first, this is like the first or second day we were shooting. We had had a conversation about costuming and hair and stuff initially, and I was supposed to wear a hat at first. Um, oh, really? For this scene, yeah. But then I think there was sort of a miscommunication or something where one person thought I should wear the hat and the other person didn't. And the I way my that. hair was, it was hard for the hat to really like stay yeah. on anyway. So uh -huh. I took it off to show, and I showed Myra, and he's like, your hair looks great like that. Just fluff it and go out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. I, I think it was like a beret or something, right? Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. It is in the script. Um, mm -hmm. the, the script, it says, like, young tomboyish 20s wearing a beret or something like that. Right, um, right. Yeah. I think it works. It does work. It works particularly because of you know, her attitude and her, the message that she's getting across, you know, this is obviously before Black Panther and all that stuff like that happened, yeah, but I yeah. think it's a nice kind of tribute to it almost, or yeah. showing that that's the direction that the world is going to go in, you know, yeah. embracing who we are 100% in our look and in our voices. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's also earlier before this, and we had, we had to work it out too, um, but you come in with a leather jacket on. And then mm -hmm. we shot you like taking it off. I don't even know if that made it into the film or not, but I don't think so. Um, 
Yeah, because because yeah. then we started shooting this scene and you didn't have it on. It was like, oh, we gotta transition oh, wow. the jacket, you know. <laughs> um, <but laughs> it, it was enough time in between. It's like you're coming in here and it's a whole other scene, and then then we see you again. So, um, but yeah, that the Black Panther thing. Like one of the things in my mind was like, okay, well, two things. Number one is that Cat would technically be would grow to be a Black Panther. Because if this was in the 50s, then let's say she was 20, 20 or, I don't know, she was still living at home with her dad. So she might have been like- Yeah, 18, 19. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you put, you, put two, you put 10 years on her yeah, yeah. and you're in like 69 and she's a Black Panther. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, but the other thing is this, because I remember there was a, the, these these reviewers that were like, okay, I don't know what time period I'm in. And I never intended on how King to be in like one specific time period. Hmm. Ever. Really? No, no. I wanted it mostly to be, be 50s-ish with touches of things from other eras. Hmm. So like how wears like this poet shirt from, from like the some Shakespearean poet shirt or whatever like or even like a 19th century thing mm -hmm. um, and 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 like and like um Scroop later wears like has like vans on like when in the last scene oh, where did he, yeah 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 we we knew about all that stuff and we were like is this what we want to do like yeah yeah because I wanted it to feel like even the cars, like you're gonna break it down, like the cars, like yeah, I do you remember know. the cars are different, yeah, yeah, yeah. There were some that were from the '50s, but it was like other ones that were not, you know, yeah. So I never really, I wanted it to feel classical and modern at the same time. I mean, I thought that the goal was for it to be in the period for most of the time, but then have some touches of like modernism, but like a little bit of a contemporary feel. Yeah, we, we we take for granted the music a lot because we're so we're so indoctrinated to modern music. Mm -hmm. This music would have never existed in oh, that right. time period, like at all. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so, like even like the blends and mixes and stuff, like it's stuff from like classical music, it's stuff from jazz, it's stuff from R and B. It's like you know. Yeah, for sure, for sure. It's it's not like not even that R and B from then. You know, this ain't the R and B mm -hmm. from then. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so anyway, let's let's let it run. Yeah, we got to stop there, right? Don't we have to stop there? We have to stop there, don't we? We have to show the shoe. I think the shoe is a fun story, too. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get there, but we have to stop here, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, you mean before we keep going, I got you guys. So, so were you surprised when you saw the scene, the way it was edited or how it looked uh, when you saw it? Or were you more like, I, I don't even know what happened, and this was like three years ago, and like, oh, cool, I'm looking at something now. Like, I remember p bits and pieces of it. Like I remember us doing that scene in the bar where he grabs me a couple of times. Um, and then I did forget that I like ran through the car and walked, like ran around. I kind of forgot that piece of it. Yeah. Um, but then when I saw it, I was like, oh yeah, we did do all of that. That's right. And I thought it was really well edited. Yeah, I was kind of sad we had to cut it up as much as we did, but we had to just because of the pace of the music. I mean, we mm -hmm. do musicals and the stuff's kind of pre-made and you got to kind of, cut with what what the, what the music is doing um and it was brilliant what 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 myron and, and jim did because the whole shot like that whole shot there where it like goes in across mm -hmm. the car that actually started like further back there's like a whole if, if you I, I don't know you, you didn't never you never saw it but there was a, a whole shot where it followed you through the parking lot across the car and then and then to where mm. it was you know um, but we got most as much as we could in it. Uh, shout out to Kareem, uh, Kareem Walks, who was our editor. He's also a fantastic uh, saxophonist. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, 
um, which was which was very helpful because it's a musical, right. and so he understands like okay, like you know musical terminology and stuff like that. So that was really helpful. Um, now the other thing is this: Do you remember what time of day it was? Well, what time of day does it look to you right here? I mean, this is definitely a, like a nighttime. Of, yeah, yeah, early in the morning maybe because we've or been early morning. Night, right? yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Do you remember what time we actually did shoot it? Like was uh, it like noon or something like that? It was something like it was actually yeah a little afternoon yeah. Okay. okay. Um, I probably have some pictures from when we were out there. Yeah, I do remember. I do. Yeah, we had hundred percent sunlight in the pictures. I do have hundred percent. Right. Yeah. So we we were able to, we we being K Kareem, <laughs> Kareem uh, was able to. I mean, I I was like over over had I oversight over it too to make sure, but we made it look like nighttime ish. To the point where you're not like looking at like, oh, now it's bright. It actually looks like it could be nighttime. You know, it's actually really, really believable. Um, the only thing about that was that I I felt like we lost a little bit of the color, you know, in doing that. You know, a little bit. I think it kind of works for the scene because of the, the like because it's a darker scene. You know, like mm -hmm. dramatically wise, I think it kind of makes sense that the when you this the cinematographer when you're looking at it like it's a darker feel to it you know yeah. so i think it works yeah it, a lot of, it, it, there's it, a lot it, of shadows and stuff on like our faces and things which mm -hmm. i think is kind of cool and a contrast to in the club and elsewhere in the film yeah that's what one, one one thing somebody like referred to like in this shot where it puts you down there and then closes the door and then you turn and um someone specifically mentioned like there's this like shadow casting across mm -hmm. the and stuff that we had, that we had planned because we knew how could you plan the sun, the sun to do that, and and it was actually annoying for me and Kareem in editing, because it was like, oh now we know it's not nighttime because there's the sun, but then can we just say it's going to be dusk? Okay, and the sun is coming up. Sure. Yeah. Let, let me ask you um, uh, another question. Um, when you heard the the music for How King in general, mm -hmm. what were your what were your thoughts and did it did it feel like a did it feel like a typical musical to you did it feel like something else what what were, what were you thinking when you heard this no definitely not a typical musical um definitely leaning more on the like the r b like hip-hop sounds um fused into into i don't i don't even know if i would necessarily call it a musical either um, mm -hmm. When I first heard it, or when I first sort of thought heard about the the concept, I thought about I don't know if you remember this, but Beyonce did a, like a film from MTV years and years and years ago. Yep. Um, what was it like the hip hop of Cam Carmen Carmen? Yeah, Carmen, or yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. And that that's where my mind went to that. Um, and I think it's pretty similar in the, at least the concept of um, mixing sort of the mute the R and B like hip hop sounds with um like a more operatic or dramatic um mm -hmm. storyline because it's definitely not a show tune like right. musical kind of thing uh, yeah. so when i was telling people to watch the film i had to kind of preface it or explain a little bit about what they're getting themselves into because you know i have a lot of musical theater friends and so when they mm -hmm. think of when i say oh i'm in a musical that's on film they're like oh okay cool they're, they have a completely different um kind of idea of what they might be getting themselves into so i had to kind of uh give yeah. them a little bit of background yeah there, there were a lot of people that were surprised that everything was sung all the time mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right you know but but to you know like conceptually for me at least with this project i i felt like that was necessary so it's like the concept of a world where everything is sung and there and no one speaks anything you know, where there has to be the more of sus suspension of disbelief if you have to shift back and forth between singing, as opposed to like we're always singing. And once you accept the fact that it's a world where people are singing everything, then the idea of going back and forth doesn't have to happen. We're just always in singing world. The purpose of the songs in musicals are when the person doesn't have the words, right? Exactly. The exactly. speaking words to, to describe yeah. however they're feeling or what they're going through. So they bust into song. Yeah. Whereas here, we're just in song the full time and certain things kind of um, ebb and flow. You know, some ebbs and flows in, in the, the types of 
Yeah, like, yeah, with yeah. musicals, it's like, my emotions are so overwhelming, I must sing a song about it. Yes, or do a dance break. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. For something like like this, actually, the, the approach, and I'm glad that you picked up, like, the, the operatic nature of it. I want it to be as if, like, it's it's like, here's the, the thesis statement or something like, what if opera was created right now? How would that sound? You mm. know, as opposed to having the the... I don't know, four, uh, 400 plus years of history of opera and and have to make things in the context of all the stuff that already happened in, in, in Europe. So like me as a black person from America, if I think of like a concept like opera, how would I do that mm -hmm. without being completely informed by what Europeans have done with it all this time? And then at the same time, you know, it's like mm -hmm. contradicting myself, but using like the techniques that they used, you know what I mean? But wow. within the perspective of just like what's happening, like more modern culturally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're yeah. just putting a different lens, right? On Yeah, on be because a lot of people think opera and they immediately think that someone needs to be singing like this, you know what I mean? Like that's, yeah, that's like, totally. you know, but that is that is that what makes it opera or the reality is that that type of singing is actually practical for the medium because there's no microphones you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah so it's not like so if all that history didn't happen where they had to sing it over like 70 piece orchestras without a microphone and microphones weren't invented invented how would people be singing opera probably more like how people sing musical theater mm -hmm. that's or like r&b or something so. This just yeah. this theories, this theories. I, oh, another thing. The other thing I wanted to talk about too was this. So, it's an in interesting shot. Tell us how this how this was for you, where you see Scroop's arms, but we see mm -hmm. well, the, the shot is. But it's on. all on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I I wonder how um he had the camera situated because he was still really there. But I mean, you just really see the intensity and. In, in my face and just like the seriousness of the moment. Yeah, I think if I recall, I think Jim was like you were sort of like, singing right? to the camera. Like he was, can't, the, the camera was Scroop's face. And I think Dion was sort of- Like on the like side? Under, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> on like the right side of the camera or actually both sides. And he just kind of was reaching like from behind Jim or something like that. Mm hmm. Or did yeah. they put the camera on? Their, they put the camera on his shoulder. I can't remember. Yeah, I feel like it might have been like on Dion's shoulder, over his shoulder or something. Maybe that was it. Yeah, and just kind of reaching in with his hand and stuff. I, I thought that was a really good idea, like how that was done, because it looks it's it's very striking. It's another like it, iconic moment for me, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and the blue light, like I think, is really. really yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. The, shout out to Tom with the lighting and, and a lot with Rob Peck and Myron, as far as like coming, coming together with the, the colors and the looks and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. that's, that Now, do you remember that space is Rob Peck's apartment? It's place, yeah. Yeah. I apartment. do remember that, yeah. Cause we were- That was we were, remarkable. <laughs> like I was able to transform that space into that. But we we you know did some stuff like there's the posters and stuff in the back that Vanessa put up. Yeah, just the fact that he had such a space that looked like it, you know, like yeah. as his apartment or his house. right, like just kind of like underground club vibe and stuff. It yeah. it, it really really worked well. I, I yeah. what, the part that's funny to me when I whenever I look at it, I remember my shoes being a little big for me, and so when we had to do that run around when I when I did the run around, my shoe came off. And in my mind, I'm like, wait, do I stop and get my shoe or did I let it go? And I was like, let me just keep going and then we'll do it again and I'll keep I'll yeah. my shoe on. But I think, you know, we found, we made a way to make it work. Um, Cause I think no, it's kind of cool like that, that Hal picks it up at the, in the next scene, right? Um, it's right at the end here, he picks it up. Right, right. Yeah, it, it, my, when you, your, shoe, your shoe got left, Myron liked it and he was like, oh, let's make it a thing. Mm -hmm. You know, he's the type of he's the type of director where it's like you know whatever something may happen there and just kind of gets the idea and rolls with. It. I think he enjoys just kind of being in the moment and coming with the creative idea. You know, it's like because he's a singer too. 
um, it's kind of the idea of like a singer that likes to to ad lib. You know what I mean? Or mm -hmm. a musician that likes to ad lib. Or like so you, with musicals and stuff, like it being typically being live, and you kind of have mm -hmm. to roll with what happens, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. This scene, this shot too, we cut it short because of the time, you know, people were, you know, this seemed like we we're sitting on Hal for a long time, but he actually holds the shoe for a while. And in the, in the unedited version, he like throws it on the ground, mm -hmm. hmm. which is cool, but we didn't have. But I, I, think, I think it's better that he didn't throw it because really? in my mind, it goes to Cinderella where yeah, eventually, definitely. you know, the shoe belongs to the girl yeah. that he's supposed to be with and da da da. So I think I like the whole video shoot better. A lot of everything is like flow of energy for me. So like even in the in the scene where you all are struggling, um, it, it's like the energy has to continue, like has to be continued flowing, you know, for it to feel for it to feel right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, like when I hear music, it's like energy is flowing and passing off from one thing to another. So the flow of the energy was right for for how it looked with him holding it and then transitioning to like not where outside your house, you know. My scene partner, Scroop, he was, he's amazing. And it was so much fun to play with him um, in that scene. I think going into this before I met him and listening to his voice, I'm like, oh, this guy, he's gonna be like really tough. And Rough like, and rugged. You know, <laughs> but he was so nice. It's such a sweetheart um, for each of the, you know, whenever we would do a different take and he had to rough me up a little bit. He's like, are you okay? Like, am I doing it too hard oh, nice. or <laughs> So it was very much like open lines of communication between us and just making sure that we were, you know, felt good about what we were doing together. Yeah. So I just want to shout him out. Yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, Dion was a, a a last minute casting thing. I had somebody else in the role. My, Myron had gone to, um, I think, a wedding or a funeral or, or something, um, and and Dion was the singer there. He's he's from Cleveland, mm -hmm. and we shot this part in Cleveland. So he was like, "Man, I heard this awesome singer. Man, you should really check out his stuff." And and so I checked him out, and I was needed for somebody to fill that spot. So I was on the phone with Dion probably like a day or two before we shot. Oh wow, like, bro, bro, can you do this, bro? <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I got him to get get to the studio, and then we we sized him and stuff, and it, you know it worked out. It worked out really well. So yeah, definitely. Well, Sheree, thanks for being here. First of all, of course, thanks, thanks for having me. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's just been a just a bunch of guys prior to this, so it's good to oh, have. Oh really? You lady representation yeah tell us like what you're working on what you're planning on working on in the future yeah so i have been in audition mode lately um doing a lot of self tapes so that's been really where a lot of my parties have been i just did a show in connecticut for a kids a kids musical it's called two kids for people who may be interested two kids stories um but it's all about baltimore and that dance culture and things like that so wanting mm -hmm. to do more work created by black and brown folks, um, because I think it's important for us to, to tell our own stories and to get them out there more. And I feel like now is definitely the time that people seem to be more open and willing to hear and, and have us at the sort of the driver's seat of those things. So mm -hmm. I hope to be a part of more projects like Cal King and, and things like that in the future. Um, and then other than that, just try, trying to like make sure I keep my sanity as much as possible, you know, yeah. finding ways to connect with my family and friends. And I just moved to a new apartment. So enjoying okay. that. Cool. Well, again, thank you so much for being here. I definitely appreciate you. Um, i excited to see about all the things you have coming up in the future. And, and hopefully we'll have another chance where we can work together on something. I'm sure, yes. you know, you just did. Know. I'm always ready. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, you were great in How King. Um, love your energy, your voice. Always super professional. Go call her and hire her for stuff. If you're watching this, Sheree is <laughs> awesome. Again, thank you everybody for checking this out. Go watch How King Gans on Amazon Prime. It's on all the VODs. That's about it. This is Steve Wallace here. We got Sheree Moultrie in the house. And peace. <laughs>